Here we go. Okay. Well, let me just begin by saying what a wonderful what a wonderful experience it was to be able to to teach Spanish last semester. It was far more rewarding and engaging and fun than I imagined it would. And, and it was in large part to your help. Um, you know, it is, I have so much respect for what you all do. And I feel like such a beginner, <laughs> you know, which I, which I was, but what I, so I'm not trying this <clears throat> in the idea that I feel like I have in any way mastered uh, language learning, but in the spirit of comprehensible input pedagogy and working to try to provide students with some engaging, meaningful ways that they could interact with language and use language. Um, I wanna share just a few different ideas. So these were some projects that we did. And the one I'm gonna play just a little bit of, and I probably won't have time to play the audio from some of these other ones, but the scratch, like we did three different projects over the course of the semester. And I didn't put a slide in for this, but I love the, the power and the grace of recorded audio or asynchronous audio. Because when we ask students, you know, live in class, of course it's good to do, but the pressure and the performance aspect of that is really different than when they have as many takes as they want to record it and to get it right. And I think also to listen to us or listen to others. And I just, I love that. So these tools really focus uh, a bunch on kids being able to record. And one of the things that was challenging for me teaching Spanish with CI pedagogy was I tend to be very focused on kids creating, but I know, and I understand a little bit <clears throat> that CI is so much more about students just absorbing and listening. So, you know, there's definitely a balance there. The last thing I'm going to briefly mention is book creator. I wish I had started this at the beginning of the semester, creating a cumulative portfolio of our work and our projects, because I really ran out of time and none of the kids really got that finished. But all of these ideas I want to share, I would love to have work with you if you want to try any of them, uh, because now that I'm not teaching Spanish, I'm back to having half my time to be an instructional coach. Uh, I'm working with Whitney Finley on her seniors creative writing project that we're wrapping up, but I have some time and I would love to help you with these. So uh, the Scratch Dialogue projects were, like a lot of these projects, to provide an opportunity for students to use vocabulary in their language in a meaningful way. But that green number three bullet um, was really a, a nice one. It was to, to bring together computational thinking, which is something that is really important today as students need to think algorithmically and have, have a feedback loop different than art, right? It, it, when you're trying to make something work in a little block-based program, like you see here on the left, you know, the timing has to be right and, and it's it requires computational thinking. And I think that we created some durable language uh, lessons here. Later, if you want to, and I sent you this slideshow, Scratch is MIT's uh, block-based programming community. And so we have 41 projects that kids in my two sections uh, did this last semester, and there's all kinds of things in terms of, you know, skills and abilities and everything that you're going to see there, but a lot of fun and animation in some cases, but usually it, the focus is on dialogue. And so the, I'm going to play just a little bit of this one for you. Uh, this is Lily's culminating project. This started with a template. So, and this is something I would be happy to help you with too. Kids don't have to be starting from scratch, in scratch, uh, we can create, and I think this is a great lesson model, a starting point for them where like in this case, we had done a movie talk about Coco, we had built vocabulary. Um, and so when they open their project, they remix it, it already had seven characters from Coco. And they, they ideally I wanted to choose two. Some of them did choose three, but made it a little more complicated, but the, it already had that and their focus for, for our Spanish class was really on the language. And again, this is the third project. So students had already done a project that was you know, strictly the text, and then we learned how to record audio. Uh, here's, here, here is a, a little play of, of Lily's. And as the project, you click the green flag, um, I set this up where they can do both a Spanish and an English version. So we'll play through, and this won't actually finish the English, but we'll take a look here. If I can get my audio on. Hola, Ernesto de la Cruz. Me gusta su guitarra. Gracias, niño. Hola, carabros. Yo escapo de la oficial. 
Quebeño, tuve un sueños de ustedes. Fuimos a la fiesta, me gusta la fiesta. No me importe, Miguel, tú eres casi uno escuelito. Yo no soy muerto, yo te llamo por una razón. Voy a escapar al otro lado con Miguel. Voy a ver Coco con Miguel. No, ayúdame por favor. Necesitas escapar la niebla. No y voy a ayudarte con ese. Yo tampoco. Oh, sí, tú, Sara. Adiós, niño. Okay, so that was the end of the Spanish. Now we'll just hit it again. Just to show. I like your guitar. Thank you, boy. <laughs> okay, so I don't play the whole thing here. Uh, Hello, gentlemen. I just escaped the office. In a scratch project, this is the project view. We're gonna click see inside, and this is the code. So they really just alternated between a block that says and puts a little speech bubble and then a sound. And so they, uh, you know, like I said, chose two, maybe three characters. I really wanted to limit that. And we kept it simple where four seconds was, was the delay uh, in the project. And you can click on the template. And so this is what they started with and they would choose to remix this. And that was really their starting point. So, um, I can go to the next one. This was the first project we did in Scratch. Uh, it was just simply two characters interacting and talking back and forth with speech bubbles. There was no recorded audio. Um, the second project we actually did, and I'll talk briefly about puppet video. They they use finger puppets to make a, a video, and then they learned how to add their narration. Scratch is really awesome because they record their audio as separate pieces. It's super easy for them to go in if they need to redo, you know, fix their pronunciation. Um, it really lends itself well to that. And then this was the last project, which we, which was both in English and Spanish. Um, I started off with a planning slideshow, and I'll just show you this really quick. In Google Classroom, I think this is an excellent way to manage projects. Project. So the, these are the steps. These are the eight steps. And again, this was a culminating project that we did at the end. Um, but I'm able to see their progress as they're going along here. So slide two, they drug, or is that right? Is that the word? Drag one of the circles over to the, you know, two characters or three characters. So they they mark the characters they were going to use, the weren't ones they weren't. Then they put the vocabulary words. I required they use 10 of our vocabulary words over here they could click and they can go to our list. And so I used a Google site as a way to share, you know, different links and things. And so this was a spreadsheet. And as we, after we did a movie talk on Coco, you know, we built this list of 30 or so different vocabulary words. And so they would be able to create that. And then they created their scripts. They did a Spanish script and they did an English script. And then they ultimately would link their project here. So using a slideshow in that way in Google Classroom as an organizing document for the project I think worked really well. Um, and from a copyright standpoint, Pixar publicly shared uh, this background, you know, to use. And um, we talked about fair use and, and what we're doing here and how this, how we're complying with copyright law. Second little tip is Loom. Um, uh, I don't know if you're using it now, but there's different ways to record your screen. Actually, um, Mr. Gorham was the one who really pointed me to this at, at the like last spring when we did remote learning for the first time because he had heard about it and uh, I I use different tools, but boy, Loom is powerful. It's free. Uh, there's no time limit um, for educators. It's free, and then all of the the links are unlisted, and that's important for a movie talk. The movie talks I did were usually three to five minutes. Um, I just recorded a short portion from Disney Plus, um, and it let me record it with subtitles. So I'm not republishing any of this online directly. Um, I actually included a link if you wanted to see one here. Um, but this way I can use this in the classroom with students if I want to for my flex learners or for others, I can provide that link. It's not on YouTube. It's not a public link that people can just find. So it's a it's an unlisted link and you can download Loom for your Mac, uh, the desktop app. It is fantastic. And uh, I like also how it kind of puts your picture if you want your picture in just the corner. Um, the third little idea here, uh, we've got five more minutes, uh, is floor planner. And I wanna thank um, Damaris for the inspirational idea of you know labeling a house. I had worked with Hefe a little bit the last couple of years with some projects he did in Minecraft and and you know some of the some of the projects he was doing with house design. And so we called this our Spanish house uh, dream tour. Again I won't play this whole thing but this is a Hola y bienvenidos a mi casa. 
Mi nombre es Olivia. Vamos conmigo a visitar a la casa de mis sueños. Aquí está la mesa auxiliar. Aquí está la cama. Aquí está la ventana y escritorio. Okay, so I won't play the whole thing, but the kids were able to virtually, for free, use this website called Floor Planner, and they could design a dream house, and then I had them label that in Spanish, and their culminating project was making a screencast with Screencastify, where they took us on a tour, and they, again, they had a required number of vocabulary words that, that they used for this. Um, so in this case, there were 15 words that they had to choose, and um, it was a little, little bit similar as far as being able to uh, come up with their script. And I gave them some sentence stems that they started with in order to give a little variety. So it wasn't always in este sala, you know, I, la, la, esta la, la televisión or whatever. Um, la, fourth project idea is, is Minecraft. And if you haven't played with Minecraft a little bit, it is absolutely one of these things that shows how the future is not, is, is here, but it's not evenly distributed, which is a favorite quotation of mine, because even though it's blocky and there's a simplicity, there is an incredible power to students being able to design and create and work in a virtual environment. And so we had done movie talks on both The Incredibles and on, um, I'm trying to think of what the other one was, maybe it was Coco. But anyway, we, we had a bunch of words that had to do with houses. And so we kind of did this as a fun project at the end, this will show you here in the corner a little bit of uh, what the kids built. So we designed a house and built it together. And then the students had assignments for the objects they had to create and label with signs. And, um, and so this is, I think, my 5D section that actually got to do this a little bit more. On the, on the iPads, kids can do this, but with our Chromebooks this year, they can't. Next year with newer Chromebooks, we should be able to do Minecraft on all of them. So for, for fifth grade, we had to go to the computer lab and work with Eric Sappington um, and you know had to have some time for, for this. Um, and honestly, I ended up spending some time outside of class working on building this. And this is the kind of thing that kids would have done. I mean, they would do this. <laughs> all year without stopping. There's such motivation for this. But as the culminating project, um, what we did, we did two things. We did a photo scavenger hunt. And so students had to come in and take pictures, a selfie picture of themselves. So let me see if I can go on. Yeah. So they had to take selfies of themselves with these objects. And then in Seesaw, uh, I don't know if I can... This is a little bit of one. Uh, they had to do a quick narration. And this this is, uh, I think this is Scarlet's. Bienvenidos en mi proyecto de mi buscar para fotos en Minecraft. Yo soy Scarlet. All right. Uh, Seesaw now lets them record individually separate. Yes. Foto. Yo estoy al lado de el salón grande. Okay, so again, they had sentence stems and they could use their pictures or they could use other pictures that they had. Um, but that was combining Seesaw and, and um, having a way for them to have a culminating project. Last thing I'll say with caveats, you know, certainly with, with COVID and social distancing, we've got to limit student side-by-side -side time. So I did this earlier in the term and I, you know, of course, it's super important to, to limit the amount of time the kids are side by side. They love it. ¿Quieres ir en una adventura? Por supuesto. Mira, aquí está mi abuela. Hola, ¿cómo está? Okay, I'm not going to play the whole thing, but this is literally all we needed. We just had the tripod um, and the iPad attached to it, and then we printed their script that they wrote in, Go in uh, Google Docs and then put a piece of green butcher paper up in the pod. So um, th the, the app we used is called Green Screen. We have a lot of licenses for that. If you want to have that on uh, language iPads, we can, we can do that, and that lets you have a little background behind. So a simple project. They love that. This was some of my kids' favorite project of the whole year. Um, a little app I'll mention if you have an iPhone or iPad, Voice Record Pro um, I used and providing recordings of to my students of their scripts is something I'd love to do a better job of. And anyway, it's a tool that you can use to readily record that audio, but you can share it back as a video that, that just has a picture or has text on it, doesn't actually have video images on it. 
and uh, I think I'm about out of time. Uh, and then lastly, this is the this is the book creator project. I wish I had started this at the end of the year, or sorry, at the beginning of the trimester, and not waiting for the end. But again, I had a template they created, and so I asked them about things they enjoyed most, the things they've learned. They could put video uh, projects here inside. So this is a video of Sophia's. Oh, Andre Akira Kamida. And she changed her voice, so this isn't her voice, of course. Okay, so anyway, that's that's pretty much all we have time for. But I hope those are some ideas that may be inspiring. And I would love I'd love to to work with any of you on any of that if if any of that is of interest, because um there's a lot there that you know, I've played with for a while. It was just really fun to teach content, not just computers, and then, you know, find ways to have the kids be able to use their language and, and create projects and, and share it with each other and be inspired by each other. And I absolutely love student voice and kids recording. And I just love to help you guys if any of that is something you'd like to do. Thank you very much, Wes. That was 